Hello class, this is Mr. Ensminger. We are going to wrap up Lesson 15, Contemporary America, from post-World War II to Watergate. Lyndon B. Johnson in Vietnam. Lyndon B. Johnson's two terms in office, one and a half technically, were plagued with the international issue of Vietnam. LBJ pushed for a military buildup during his time in office and issued the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. He called this Grandma's Nightshirt because it covered everything. It was, the resolution was passed in 1965. The resolution allowed for America to put as much money into the war as possible, and it also led to the institution of the draft. From 1965 to 1968, American defense spending was at nearly 60% of the national budget. The war continued to grow unpopular at home. Over 58,000 U.S. service members died in the Vietnam War, and the death toll total was well over a million, involving American service members, allied U.S. service members, Vietnamese combatants, and Vietnamese civilians, not to mention surrounding countries such as Laos and Cambodia. I would highly recommend Ken Burns' documentary series, The Vietnam War. It's well worth your time. This is LBJ announcing the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. Hippies in the Counterculture College campuses were the hot spot for mass protest against the war in Vietnam. A new group of young anti-war and peace-loving people grew out of this era, the hippies. Hippies were the spin-off of the 1950s beatnik generation, also known as the hipsters. Writers like Jack Kerouac, Ken Kesey, and J.D. Salinger encouraged nonconformity, civil disobedience, and challenging authority. This movement sparked new music genres and a political movement in the form of America's youth. Leaders in this movement, or at least in the genre, or singers and songwriters like Bob Dylan, Jimi Hendrix, and others who wanted their voice to be heard. Arguably, the most important event of the hippie counterculture movement was the festival at Woodstock in New York in 1969. Here we have Bob Dylan and Jimi Hendrix. The Black Power Movement. A number of social issues related to civil rights were boiling over in the mid to late 1960s. The Black Power Movement was established by Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee leader Stokely Carmichael. Malcolm X, leader of the Nation of Islam movement, pushed a message of black pride and even separatism. Many in the civil rights movement were rejecting the nonviolent ideas of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This also led to the establishment of the militant civil rights group known as the Black Panther Party, formed in Oakland, California, by Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale. Here we have an iconic image of Tommy Smith and John Carlos's Black Power salute at the 1968 Mexico City Olympic Games. 1968. 1968 was a very turbulent year in American history. In January, the Viet Cong led the Tet Offensive throughout South Vietnam, killing hundreds of American soldiers. Hippies moved to San Francisco in search of peace, love, and drugs. This caused a dramatic spike in drug abuse in the hippie, counter, in the hippie counterculture, which led to violence, disease, poverty, and drug abuse and addiction. President Lyndon B. Johnson announced that he would not seek re-election on March 31, 1968. This opened a political Pandora's box heading into the 1968 presidential election. April 4th, tragically, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee by James Earl Ray. Dr. King was protesting on behalf of sanitation workers in Memphis. His death led to widespread rioting across the country. Just two months later, on June 6th, presidential candidate Bobby Kennedy, brother of John F. Kennedy, who had served as attorney general under JFK, 
was assassinated in Los Angeles, California by Sirhan 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 while on the campaign trail for the presidential nomination by the Democratic Party. Richard Milhouse Nixon easily won the 1960 presidential election, promising a return to law and order and an honorable end to the Vietnam War. A documentary that I would highly recommend is 1968 by Tom Brokaw. Assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The Chicano, the NOW, the Native American, and the LGBT movement of the 1960s. The Chicano movement of the 1960s was led by Cesar, Ch Cesar Chavez. The Chicano Civil Rights Movement, or El Movimiento, was a civil rights movement extending the Mexican-American civil rights movement of the 1960s with the stated goal of achieving Mexican-American empowerment and labor rights throughout the, the United States. With her book, The Feminine Mystique, published in 1963, Betty Friedan wrote new, wrote new Ground by exploring the idea of women finding personal fulfillment outside of their traditional roles. She also helped advance the women's rights movement as one of the founders of the National Organization for Women Now. She advocated for an increased role of women in the political process and is remembered as a pioneer of feminism and the women's rights movements. Richard Oakes was a Mohawk Native American activist. He spurred Native American studies in university curricula and changes in U.S. federal government policy toward Native Americans. He also led the occupation of Alcatraz Island, just outside of San Francisco. Harvey Milk was the first openly gay politician in the United States and considered the first advocate for equal rights for the LGBT community in the 1960s and 70s. It's also important to note the importance of the Stonewall riots in New York City in the summer of 1969. Women's Liberation. Women's liberation was an important issue throughout the 1960s and 1970s. The courts provided for more equal rights in labor and in education. Women had won rights through the 1964 Civil Rights Act, but continued to be denied those rights in every facet of American society, most notably the workforce. An increasingly large number of America's labor force in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s were women. Many working mothers entered the workforce. Women worked in non-traditional jobs, doctors, lawyers, engineers, and the like. Sandra Day O'Connor broke the glass ceiling at the Supreme Court. She became the first woman to serve on the United States Supreme Court. Sally Ride was the first female NASA astronaut in the United States and the first female astronaut in the United States to travel to space. And here, this is a pretty interesting graph, and this just shows you the growth from 1975 to 2008 of the growth of women in the labor force in the United States. And you see the steady growth from 1975 to 2008, and that growth has continued to, to steadily tick upward. Here we have Sandra Day O'Connor, Stanford graduate, first female justice on the Supreme Court, appointed by Ronald Reagan, and another Stan Stanford graduate, astronaut Sally Rod. Issues concerning work in women in the 1970s. Need for affordable daycare, which is still an issue that working women are grappling with. Equitable pay. Women were being paid as much as 25% less than men in this era. What became known as the pink-collar ghetto, low prestige and low-paying jobs, 
like secretaries and maids who really were sort of forced into that those jobs without any ability to have uh, any type of ownership of businesses during this era. The glass ceiling, the perception that career advancement for women was not equal to men. Movies like Working Girl and 9 to 5 exploited the problems that women faced in the workforce during the 1970s and 1980s. This is a political cartoon that dealt with the gender gap in wages. Three-fourths of a penny for your thoughts due to the 25% less pay that women received in the workforce. Immigration in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. New immigrant groups increased American diversity and redefined American identity. New and increasing immigration in the United States has been taking place from many diverse from many diverse countries over the last 70 years, especially Asian and Latin American countries. The reason for immigration and the effects of immigration on American society, political freedom and economic opportunity, bilingual education, effects on public policy, politics and voting. Immigrants have contributed to everything from, you know, cuisine, music, arts, engineering, the labor force, the list goes on and on and on. Immigrants also provide an important role in the American labor force and still do. Here we have a um, image of the financial collapse in the early 2000s in Argentina, which led to a lot of Ar Argentinian immigrants moving to the United States during that era. The American Space Race, a triumph of American technological prowess. In the early 1960s, President John F. Kennedy pledged increased support for the American space program. The race to the moon continued through the 1960s. U.S. astronaut John Glenn was the first American to orbit the Earth. And in 1969, American astronaut Neil Armstrong was the first person to step on the moon's lunar surface. He pro proclaimed, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Over the past three decades, improved technology and media have brought about better access to communication and information for rural areas, businesses, and individual con consumers. As a result, many more Americans have access to global information and viewpoints as a result of the American space race and the American space program. Here we have the NASA emblem from the era. On the left, we have Neil Armstrong, and on the right, we have John Glenn. Neil Armstrong, part of the Apollo program, and John Glenn, part of the Mercury program. Here's a Time Magazine cover for the race for the moon between the United States and, well, the Soviets and technically the Chinese. Here we have the lunar landing in July of 1969. Technology. Technology can make communication and information more accessible. Dramatic advances in technology have affected life in America in many significant areas. The space race led to these great technological advancements. Cable TV, 24-hour news, CNN established this in 1980 uh, thanks to Ted Turner. Personal computers, Mac and PCs, cellular phones, calling, texting, and now they're computers in our pockets, and of course, ultimately, the internet and the World Wide Web. And if we take a look at all of these companies on this page, it's hard not to see one of these companies that is at one point in time impacted our lives, thanks to technological advancements. Changes in work, school, and healthcare. Breakthrough, breakthroughs in medical research, thanks to 
technological advancements like Dr. Salk's polio vaccine, telecommuting for work and obviously for education, distance learning started with radio and television and became more advanced with the internet, growth in white collar careers, a growing middle class in America, and the advancement of personal computers. The 1970s and Vietnamization. The decade began with the Vietnam question. President Nixon pledged to bring the war to an honorable end with the process known as Vietnamization or sometimes known as Vietnamization. Vietnamization was a plan to help train South Vietnamese soldiers and hand the war over to South Vietnam. Mass demonstrations occurred over this drawn out process many of which turned deadly. On the campus of Kent State University in Ohio and Jackson State University in Mississippi, student protesters were killed in the middle of nonviolent demonstrations. Nixon's visit to China in 1972. The relationship between the Soviet Union and China was a very cold one in the 1960s and 70s. Richard Nixon decided to exploit this communist robbery by becoming the first American president to visit communist China in 1972. It should also be noted that he also visited the Soviet Union as well. Nixon met with Chairman Mao Zedong to create an alliance between the U.S. and China for both trade and political diplomacy. Many historians consider this as Nixon's crowning achievement as president. Watergate a group of Nixon supporters broke into the Washington offices of the Democratic Party in the Watergate Hotel building. The group, known as the Plumbers, led by G. Gordon Liddy, intended to place bugs on the office phones and steal documents that would damage the credibility of Daniel Ellsberg and a number of other political opponents. The group was caught and arrested. Nixon denied any connection to the group, but evidence was discovered that he had commissioned the group of former CIA operatives. Congress moved to impeach the president, but Nixon resigned in 1974. Here we have Nixon after his resignation due to the Watergate scandal on August 9th, 1974. All right. Well, hey, if you all have any questions at all, please let me know. Thank you all so much for your time. Take care.